Welcome back to the Fun Cup Championship. We're here for round six in Anglesey for this ever-changing, always exciting endurance championship. Five rounds so far and five different winners. JPI Uvio, the winner of the first round. To the left of them, DispatchBay.com, winners of the second round. Heading further back and we have three first-time winners. We have to the left-hand side, Trumans winning the third round. We have Axiometrics winning the fourth round. And then finally, Viking, the winners of the fifth round. The question on everyone's mind is who is going to win the sixth round. Well, Trent Dominoes, they aren't one of the previous race winners of the opening rounds this season. They are, however, the reigning champions and the championship leaders. Consistency is certainly key here in the Fun Cup. As we head into round six here at Anglesey, an eight-hour endurance race from light into darkness. Here's what some of the drivers think then ahead of this slightly longer endurance race. Eight-hour race, light into darkness. Talk to us about how you prepare differently for this one probably not run the kerbs as aggressively. Um, you know, Anglesey is known through the core screw for, uh, you know, wrecking the car and the suspension. I think you've just got to be mindful that a uh, fast lap time and time again isn't necessarily going to win you the race. For us, I think what we've just got to do is keep the car on the track, keep off the kerbs, and like you say, it's an eight hour race and, and just get the race to come to us, really. You've just got to look after the tyres a bit more, because you normally do four hours, obviously you're doubling it to eight hours. It's just keeping the car in one piece and just staying chilled out for the race, basically. Obviously, if you lose a splitter at the start, the time it takes to come in and put a new one on, you've just lost so much time. So just stay chilled out, have a good sleep in between stints and you should be fine. <laughs> I think strategy is a big part of it. If you can gain some time in the pits, you'll be there at the end of the eight hours. So yeah, it's crucial that the pit stops are all clean and slick throughout all 12 of them. We do uh, dehydrate quite a lot in these long races. Uh, we have been suffering from cramp in the past, uh, so yeah, we try and preload uh, sort of 24 hours before on electrolytes in the hope that um, you know we won't be cramping up and we'll survive the eight-hour race. The night, because you've got a lot of different levels of experience, you've got some drivers who are used to night racing, you've got some who aren't, so it's just trying to gauge it at night with the traffic. So obviously, some people might not see you, some people do see, you, so it's just being really extra careful. It's going to be hard work, a very physical track. But um, you think we start at 3 o'clock, finish at 11, so we've really only got an hour and a half in the dark. Um, and, you know, we, we recently did the Spa 25-hour race in the dark, so we've you know, had a bit of practice in it, so it yeah, shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's a long race, eight hours, so you're not going to win it in the first hour or so. So we'll, we'll just plod on and do what we've done all season and hopefully have a good position at the end. The drivers then ready to go. Truman's lining up on pole position. Let's head over to our commentator, Chris Hartley, for a rundown of the race quiz. Well, the random grid draw has placed championship contenders Truman's on pole position. Quickest in qualifying this morning, though, Agua Caliente. They line up second. Returning to the wheel, former multiple champion Nigel Greensall will line up third for Greensall Motorsport with Team 7 alongside in fourth place. TFL and Team Kennedy complete the top six. Very gusty conditions here on this beautiful Welsh coastal circuit are going to make it a tough eight hour race. So it's Jonathan Hode in the purple Truman's car that leads the field round towards the end of this formation lap. Alongside him in the green Agua Caliente car is Rob Perry. That team looking for their first win in the Fun Cup. The lights then about to go out. And we go racing here at Anglesey, on board with Rob Croydon for Team Kennedy. He's getting alongside and drawing past Jonathan Seymour in the Team 7 car. And look at that, a very aggressive start for John King in the black and red Team 7 Fun Bikes car. He's made up position, so too the turquoise Raw Motorsports car of Alex McLeod, who's gone from 7th to 5th and into 2nd place. Into the banking for the first time has got Nigel Greensaw, so he's split the two front row starters. Is Chris Hart, the championship leader, 
who's trying to come from 16th on the grid. He's drawing alongside the 2419 7 car of Alan Brown, and he's going to whip around the outside of him on the way into Church Corner. Uh, there he is now, notoriously quick on the first laps of the race. Indeed, quick all the way through the races normally. He's drawing alongside now Chris Double in the Axiometrics car. Just ahead is Ryan Burke in the Apollo car. And there we've got the two leaders side by side, and Nigel Greensaw pounces on his return to the championship. He's got the lead of the race, and here comes Chris Hart. Slices past one, two, three cars. Can he get the car stopped in time? Yes, just about, as he makes his way through Rocket and through the chicane. Fantastic move from Chris Hart. There's a change for third as Andrew Bentley in the blue and black TFL racing car made his way past the Agua Cali anti-machine of Rob Perry. So from second down to fourth now for Rob, who's going to emerge in fifth place. Uh, that's going to be the fast-starting Jonathan King in the Team 7 Fun Bikes car uh, with Ben Pitch in the red PLR racing machine just behind in sixth place. A uh, bit off the pace, though, dropping down the order on this first lap to the tail end of the field is Jonathan Seymour in the 263 Team 7 car. Uh, out onto lap two, then they come. This the battle for fifth place, just behind in seventh place. A good start for Alex. McLeod uh, initially, but he's dropped back to where he started now in seventh. Ben Pitch trying to come around the outside here at the right-hander at the banking. There's nothing doing there. John King, who's getting more and more experienced in these cars, managing to fend him off for the time being. Back on board with Chris Hart, who went from 16th to 8th on the first lap of the race, and is about to go 7th, I reckon, because he's got a much better run coming out of church corner on Alex McLeod. Alex will still be alongside him, but a left-hander coming up for the first part of Rocket at the top of the hill. Absolutely nose-to-nose -nose they go, with a GT radial car just behind as well, Martin Gibson, and on board with Rob Croydon. Chris Hart goes through, gets into 7th place, and Rob Croydon steals a place as well. Crafty bit of driving that, he let them all bunch up, then carried more speed into the corner. And the Team Kennedy car gains a place as well, up to ninth position, trying to fight back after losing a few places on the first lap of the race. And then just behind running out the top 10 is the GT Radio car. Uh, now there's been a change for fifth place, as Ben Pitcher's got ahead of John King, and look at that, squeezing down the inside through the corkscrew, Chris Hart with another brave move. And, well, you wouldn't think there was eight hours or just under eight hours of racing still to go the way he's cracked on here. Uh, Chris Hart driving this like a 10-minute sprint race, but fantastic move at the corkscrew. You do not see passes there very often. A tight squeeze. A uh, very good start to the race for the experienced Andrew Bentley there in the TFL car to third place. A replay now of Rob Croydon, who earlier in the lap got this move done on Ryan Burke in the Apollo Motorsport car. So at the start of the lap on the way into the first left-hander. There was also this move from Ben Pitch to get past Jonathan King and into fifth place, and that was at the top of the straights on the way into Rocket. A little bit further down the field, a nice duel developing here between the 251 Team 7 Hawthorns car of John Illy and just behind him with the onboard camera, Morgan Tilbrook for JPR Alpha Racing, both enjoying their first taste of eight-hour Fun Cup racing, their first full seasons together. As we've got now John King defending the inside line here for Team 7 Fun Bikes from uh, the resurgent Rob Croydon. And Rob trying the outside line here might give his own place up because Martin Gibson in the GT radio car has pounced and returns the favour gets the place back where he lost it on the previous lap to Rob Croydon and now has a look at the inside of the way into Peel but John King doing a fine job here at battling near the front of the field Ed and Chris Bridle sharing the driving duties with him at this season uh, having gone very well last year in the championship and we return to this battle between uh, John Illy and Morgan Tilbrook Morgan not quite finding a way past at the top of the straight but here he comes down into the corkscrew the door opens up down in the inside into the left hander he goes carries the speed and there's just about enough room to come through there a little twitch on the way out of the corner but a nice move that in the Alpha Racing car there though is your race leader four time Fun Cup champion Nigel Greensaw hasn't been in one of these cars at least not in a race for around about 12 months now his first race of the season joining Paul and Ryan Lewis in the car he runs the team uh, up ahead you've got the 263 team seven car being lapped by the Agua Caliente machine and then Ben Pitch in the red PLR car who's being sucked in here by the rapid Chris Hart for two rent dominoes coming through church corner and there the back marker just delaying on the exit the PLR car Ben Pitch he's going to lose the momentum and he's going to lose a place as well so into fifth position now it will be for Chris Hart so terrific first few laps for Chris. Crucially, is ahead of his closest championship rival, Farkini, 
in the JPL UVO car, which is coming from 18th on the grid. I'm back on board with Rob Croydon and running out of road there, going onto the grass, onto the kerbs and losing all his momentum in several places. John King, you've got the FNS car up there as well. And suddenly Riley Phillips has appeared in the dispatchbay.com car from 14th on the grid. Fantastic battle for seventh this. It's the GT radial car of Martin Gibson that gets to the head of the pack. He's seventh, Riley Phillips eighth for dispatch base. Steve Walton ninth and then in tenth place, Rob Croydon. Here's a replay as Steve Walton drew alongside John King, the fun bikes car just ran out of road, but John kept cool and got the car back on track. So there is the gap growing now slightly between the top two. Just a couple of tenths of a second a lap quicker is Nigel Greensaw than uh, Jonathan Hode. Third place is Andrew Bentley, still for TFL Racing. And then a couple of seconds behind him, that's the fourth place car of Rob Perry for Agua Caliente. That team has really come on leaps and bounds in the uh, 2019 season so far. Oh, there's drama behind, I'm afraid. John King off the road also. Uh, the Apollo car went wide as well, but it's a full spin as there's some fluid down because absolutely sideways there. He's Alex McLeod, he gets well out of shape and all onto the grass on the way through turn one as well. So several cars coming unstuck from inside that top ten. And that's allowed the UVO car to get in the mix here. He's drawing alongside Steve Walton. He's already got ahead of Rob Croydon. Trying to go around the outside now is Farkini on the brakes, locking up there. Steve Walton determined not to let him through. And the FNS car stays ahead for now. Rob Croydon with the onboard camera closes back up to the tail of them. It's Martin Gibson for GT Radial, still seventh. Riley Phillips, eighth for Dispatch Bay. And this is the battle for ninth place. Rob Croydon out of the top ten now for the first time in the race. And from 18th and into the top ten, the Evo Cup as Walton runs wide on the way out of Pill Corner. And this might be an opportunity now. Around the outside goes Farkini in the Evo Cup. He's got the inside line for the right hand out, down through the court screw. And he gains a play. So a ragged battle going on there between these three. Three cars and closing up to the tail of them is Nick Nunn in the Team Viking car. Race winners last time out, meaning they had to start absolutely last on the grid uh, after their first ever victory came at Zandvoort. But Nick Nunn has made a good start here. He's got it to 12th place now as we go back on board with Rob Croydon. A cheeky look down the inside here at the banking and he's going to pounce and move ahead of Steve Walton. <laughs> Just 150 metres or so behind the circuit is the Irish Sea and the coast. And you can see just how rough the waters are because we've got gale force winds blowing the cars around at the track here. There's your race leader, Nigel Greensall for Greensall Motorsport. Uh, second place dropping back now, though, the pulsing in car of Jonathan Ho, Team Truman, who are third in the championship standings at TFL Racing. And Andrew Bentley having an excellent run in third position on their own at the moment. And then you've got the Agua Caliente car, which started on the front row of the grid in fourth place. Place. on board with Rob Croydon who is battling here with Steve Walton they keep changing places they've swapped around a few times in the last couple of laps and back up the inside of him taking the draft and taking the inside line should be Steve Walton yet the FNS car appears and following him through is Ryan Burke for Apollo Motorsport so that will put Ryan back into the top 10 after he lost a bit of time with a grassy moment a couple of laps ago. It's normally Guy Wenham that starts the car for Apollo, but it's Ryan's birthday today, so they've given him the honour. The team on a high after their first podium of the season at Zandvoort last time out. Now, having gone from 16th to 5th on the first few laps of the race, there's been an excursion for the two-red Domino's car of Chris Hart, so he's back down to 15th place. As losing the back end of the car through turn one, that's Ben Pitch. But what a recovery. Great reactions there from Ben. A full 360, but he's not actually going to lose a place yet, so he'll remain in 5th position. It will, though, bring Martin Gibson in the GT radio car much closer to him. Then next up, it's the pink and black dispatchbay.com car of Riley Phillips. And there, from 18th on the grid, the UVO car now ahead of their championship rivals. And here's a replay on board with Ben Pitch. Just got a little bit loose through turn one. Around he goes, and quick as you like, he recovers it and back on his merry way. And this is the moment that Chris Hart went off the road at the banking. Not his fault at all. A radio box getting uh, stuck behind the pedals caused him to momentarily lose the brakes. There's no doubt about it. These high winds are having a, a real effect on the cars out on track, especially with the crosswinds that they've got. Uh, teams getting ready now for the first round of mandatory pit stops, which will be every 40 minutes. There's Charlie Kennedy, whose teammate Rob Croydon has been in the thick of the action. Uh, here is this battle on the tail end of the top 10, then FNS, Apollo, uh, the Rob Croydon car of number 1014, Kennedy. Chris Hart back at the order again. He's back ahead of the team Viking car, which started at the back of the field as well. And Ryan Burke now draws alongside Steve Walton. 
Anderson. This is going to be good stuff on the way to Church Corner. And Steve will lose momentum here because of the hole that was created on the line by the Apollo machine. So with the onboard camera, Rob Croydon is able to draw alongside. But uh, then he loses his own place because here's Chris Hart marching back up the order for the second time in the race and back into the top ten. He has come side by side just ahead, though. Ryan Burt with the inside line. He's not quite ahead yet. Gets his nose in front. Can he hold the line on the way out of the corner through the second part? Yes, he can. Uh, kicking up the dust is Nick Nunn in the yellow Viking Cup. They've all moved ahead of the Team Kennedy Cup and onto the tail end of the group has come Chris Double in the green Axiometrics car. Race winner at Zandvoort last time out as well in the first part of the double header weekend over in Holland. So a real great bit of field scrap going on here. But what a recovery from Chris Hart. Now lock up there from the FNS car down through the court screw of Steve Walton. That's going to be Chris Hart right onto the tail of the sister car. They ran under the same garage by the same uh, group and good friends, these two drivers. But Steve will want to fend off Chris Hart as long as he can. He gets a little love tap down on the straight there. And down the inside into turn one goes Chris Hart. Is he through? Yes, it looks like he is. Gains the place. Steve's still trying to come back at him around the outside, though. On the way into the right-hander at the banking. You've got Nick Nutt in the Viking car just behind us. As well, terrific scrap, and look how that has allowed the green and white Apollo car to just streak away here at Ryan Burke. Absolutely miles clear, and Steve Walton coming back now to the right of the pitch on the onboard. He's got the inside line through Church, but bravely hanging on around the outside, and in no mood to give up his position is Chris Hart. They're still going to be side by side. Nick Nanny, the Viking car, is going to get a double toe. It's three abreast here. And then you've got the next two cars trying to get a toe as well. And Nick Nanny swoops past the pair of them. Look, the yellow and black Viking car has gained two for the price of one here. They're still wheel to wheel. Wing mirror to wing mirror. It's going to be Walton through. And then there's a spin for the Viking car. And into the side of it goes Rob Croydon. But nowhere to go, I'm afraid. And both will now drop down the order. And another team in the mire is TFR Racing. They've been in the pits with a broken gear linkage and have now dropped from third place to the back of the field. Uh, Rob Croydon has lost time while he tried to restart the car and wait for the traffic to come through. So he's been stationary for 17 or 18 seconds, but he's got back going again uh, down towards the tail end of the field, though, I'm afraid, uh, for the Team Kennedy machine. Now back on board to this ferocious fight between Steve Walton and Chris Hart. Walton back ahead and again having to defend his position. Chris Hart will have no choice but to go for the outside line then on the way into the banking. And then try and cut back across, I reckon, to get the better run into Church Corner. Chris Double just behind in the JPR Axiometrics car here. Then drawing alongside is Chris Hart. He's got the line this time and through he goes. Nigel Greensall, it's like he's never been away. He's 12 seconds clear for Greensall Motorsports. Jonathan Ode for Team Truman's in second place. After the problems with TFL, it's the green Agua Caliente car of Rob Perry in third, but not for long because switching back to the inside line there through the banking is a very nicely done move from Martin Gibson. So JPR GT Radial into third place now. Agua Caliente fourth. Ben Pitts, despite his earlier spin, still going well in fifth place here. He lost a place to GT Radial, but of course gained one when TFL came into the pits. Uvio just behind though in sixth, and then Dispatch Bay in seventh place in the 2-2-1 car, having risen from 14th on the grid. And they're bouncing over the curbs on the exit to turn one is Chris Hart. Gutsy drive this has put him back up now into eighth place. And the number one car absolutely flying here at Angle C. Now Steve Walton for FNS is losing a place here to Chris Double for Axiometrics. And just behind the team Viking car of Nick Nunn. So three cars still close together. Ben Pitch coming under fire here though from Farkini. And the 225 JPR UVO car draws alongside. It's got the left hand out through Rocket, then a right straight afterwards. But the UVO car through. And so too the dispatchbay.com car, Riley Phillips. So two places lost for Ben Pitch. Down to seventh place and a spin for the Team Kennedy car of Rob Croydon. That's at turn one. Onto the grass he goes. And I think he's lost the engine, so that could be a potential safety car. And we're getting towards the pit window and reacting to that is the JPR Alpha racing car of Morgan Tilbrook, who comes in to hand over to Jonathan Curry. But they haven't yet passed the pit window open board. That's a couple of laps away. So they are going to have to come in again and make another pit stop. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to get a replay of this spin from Rob Croydon just getting loose here. We saw a very similar spin from Ben Pitch, but he was able to hold it onto the grass, though, and stuck on the edge of the road is Rob Croydon. So that brings about the first safety car of the race. And as I say, we're into the pit window almost, but not quite. They've got to pass the pit window open board, and Alpha are going to have to come back in 
and make another stop to count as their mandatory bit stop. Otherwise, they're going to get a penalty. The recovery crew very quickly make their way towards the stricken Team Kennedy car, which should be absolutely fine, but has just lost the engine. So there's Jeff Fawcett getting ready to take over for PLR Racing. Safety car still out, so they're all going to dive into the pits. Nigel Greensall has lost his 12-second advantage. A few cars in between him, though, and the purple Truman's car in second place. GG Radial in third. Here's the onboard camera with the car that's brought about the safety car. Rob Croydon being towed back, but of course has lost several laps now, and will drop right to the back of the field. In they all come then for the first mandatory pit stop window of the race. Driver changes and potentially refuelling here, although they're not going to refuel on every stop. Some will choose to refuel on every other stop. Ben Pitch coming in for PLR. And there's Ryan Burke bringing the Apollo machine in. So they're all bunched together again here. That's frustrating for the race leaders, but good news for Chris Hart and two rent dominoes. Yes, Chris had got the car back up to eighth place, but now, of course, he's much closer to the race leaders than he would have been without the safety car. Change of bonnet after splitter damage for Raw Motorsports. A very good first stint, though, from Alex McLeod, who's learning all, all the time under the tutelage of this man, multiple and reigning Renault UK Clio Cup champion Paul Rivette. He should absolutely fly in this second stint. Uh, Jeff Forsett on his return to the Fun Cup. He's being strapped into the PLR car, which was seventh coming into the pits after Ben Pitch's efforts and there, from the onboard camera view of Henry Dawes, you see the purple Truman's car, which is going to come out into the lead of the race. So into the lead for Truman's and Richard Webb, who's going to emerge from the pits in second. Agua Caliente, Matt Hogg, despite two pit stops, Alpha racing a third. So got a free pit stop there. At fourth place is the green Axia Metrics car. And there is the former race leading Greensill Motorsport car. So they've been scuppered here by a slowish pit stop. Thumbs up nonetheless for Greensill Motorsport. So out comes the Greensill Motorsport car. Fifth with Paul Lewis behind the wheel. Sixth for Zoe Burke for Apollo. Seventh for two red dominoes. They've gained one. Look who's behind them though. FNS and the JPR GT radio car has dropped down the order and a ninth place having been third when they came into the pit stops. PLR have dropped down as well out of the top 10, but I think that both teams may have taken fuel on board, so they'll be able to make up time in the next round of stops. Four laps down after their problems towards the end of that first stint at TFL Racing. It's round six of the championship, the safety car has gone back in, and there's the race leader, Richard Webb, for Team Truman's. Webby is now starting to pull away from the dark green Agua Caliente car of Matt Hogg in second. The former race leaders who dropped to fifth during the pit stops. Greensill Motorsport a third, the blue and white car. So good effort from Paul Lewis. The bright green car, Axiometrics, fourth place. He's now driven by Christian Rose. And there is Henry Dawes in the two red dominoes car, which had a very lively first stint with... Chris Hart rising from 16th on the grid. So fifth place now for them. They're all bunching up together. The Axiometrics car has a look at Paul Lewis. Christian Rose putting the pressure on here. That means that Paul Lewis is spurred on to go on the attack himself. And he goes down the inside of Matt Hogg and snatches second place. Terrific move that. It's Agua Caliente down to third. Uh, still fourth, Axiometrics still fifth with the onboard camera. Henry Dawes for two red dominoes but I'm sure there's much more overtaking still to come. Uh, now, James Anadakis down in the pit lane has managed to catch up with Nigel Greensall, who led the race before the pit stops. It's nice to be back, as uh, I've really missed racing in the Fun Cup. First time I raced one was 2004 and, and raced them every year ever since. So it's lovely to be back in it. And uh, it's great with the, uh, the team uh, that myself and Nicky have, with uh, the Paul and Ryan renting the car for the season. It's nice to be, I've been coaching them and testing with them throughout the year. And with this being an eight hour race, they, uh, they asked me if I'd come and uh, drive with them. So uh, yeah, delighted to be back on the grid. And uh, yeah, it's nice to be back in the lead. Good to hear from Nigel as Richard Webb continues to lead for Team Truman's. It's side by side for second place again, though, with the Agua Caliente car of Matt Hogg getting back down the inside of Paul Lewis, who might lose a place here to the bright green car of Christian Rose for Axiometrics. He doesn't, but then he runs wide, Paul Lewis, on the way out of the corner, and that means he's going to lose one, maybe two places here because with the onboard camera, Henry Dawes is going to follow Christian Rose through. Just a slight mistake there from Paul Lewis on the exit to the turn, but it killed his momentum. Uh, so there's the leader trying to get away from this huge cackle of Carl's fighting over second place. Agua Caliente second. Axiometrics third. Turret Dominoes fourth. Looking up the inside though is Henry Dawes. And he's going for it. Following the example set by his teammate Chris Hart in the first stint. And that's a perfectly executed move for the Scotsman. So he gains another place. Uh, there's the JPR Alpha car which came out of the pit stops third. Despite having had two pit stops during the pit window. Sort of. Uh, but uh, that's dropped down to 11th place now the 99 car. 
as into the pits with a problem, I'm afraid, comes Jeff Forsett for PLR Racing. He's not had much luck since he returned to the championship at Zandvoort last time out. At the 263 car of newcomers John Saunders, who's behind the wheel now, and Jonathan Seymour, who drove the car in the first stint, uh, three laps down, but uh, finding some pace now in their first taste of Funk Up Racing. Here at Anglesey, as bouncing over the curbs, goes Matt Hogg. Bits flying off the car, and he's going to lose a place here, I think, to Henry Dawes, who's carried the momentum around the outside. No, he doesn't. He fends him off, Matt Hogg, here. Digs his heels in, so onto the grass goes the two Red Dominoes car. You can have the Axiometrics car breathing down their necks as well. They're side by side through Church, but there's no way through again. Matt Hogg with a strong defence here of his second place in the race. Third place for the onboard camera car of Henry Dawes, who now picks up the toe. You can see him getting sucked onto the tail of that car. Axiometrics in fourth, and the battle for fifth place is going to see the Uvio car of Fabio Randaccio diving up the inside of Paul Lewis. Big lock up ahead, and it's going to be one forward one backwards for Henry Dawes. He gets past Matt Hogg, but he loses the place to Christian Rose. Looks as cool as you like with the visor down, but well, he's seen it all before. He's still very much involved in this battle, though. Uh, despite all the battles going on behind, Richard Webb has not really been able to stretch his advantage that much for Team Truman, so if they stop fighting each other, they'll be able to catch him up. Here's a replay then. On board with uh, Henry Dawes, he went left, he went right, then he went back to the left. Sold him a dummy, went at the inside of Matt Hogg, slowed the car down but not enough, went deep into the corner and carrying the momentum, getting past both of them to go from fourth to second was Christian Rose. So there Richard Webb, now just under two seconds clear of Christian Rose in second. Third place, Henry Dawes. Uh, up to fourth has come the Uvio car and more places lost then. Fragua Caliante, Matt Hogg has dropped down to fifth place with Paul Lewis for Greensill Motorsport just behind, rounding out the top six. So can these two cars now work together to catch the race leader, Richard Webb? Team Truman started on pole position. Uh, they won the round at Croft. The Axiometrics team of Chris Rose, Chris Dovell and Chris Weatherall winners at Zandvoort. But under fire now from Henry Dawes, who's got the toe again. Draws alongside, but he's on the outside line. Clips the curb on the way into the braking zone for Rocket. He's got his nose in front, but will he be able to make it stick through the chicane? I think he will. Yes, he's gone to second place. So from 16th to second now uh, for this team, which are still looking for their first win of the season, but have bagged loads of podium finishes. They only won once last year, but they still managed to win the overall championship title. Consistency is absolutely key in Fun Cup. With only eight championship rounds and only one drop score across the course of the season. Uh, the Uvio car is looking ominous in the mirrors, though. Fabio Randaccio looking very rapid indeed in his second season as a full-time Fun Cup racer. Farchini having done the first stint and moved the car up from eight on the grid so the leaders all glued together now we've had an hour of racing and there's nothing between the top four top five cars in the race great view that of Henry Dawes attacking the first corner and getting ever closer to the tail of the Team Truman's car under braking on the way into turn two and the door opens up slightly closing it just in time was Richard Webb but he's a bit ragged on the exit to the turn and he's got his foot in the door here Henry Dawes right hander at church coming up ultra quick right hander through he goes bravely done and he's got the lead of the race and now Richard Webb might lose two more places because Christian Rose is already alongside Fabio Randaccio is just on his rear wing as well and he's lost all that momentum having uh, had a bit of a ragged run out of turn two so yes he goes from first down to fourth and not done yet is Fabio Randaccio goes at the inside of Christian Rose and goes second so he's gone fourth to second in about 20 seconds fantastic battling here in the fun cup so for the first time in the race it's Henry Dawes and two red dominoes that lead but had a spin oh that from sixth place is Paul Lewis for Greensill Motorsport we're coming up towards the two hour mark then one quarter distance here in the fun cup busy race this for the teams they have 11 pit stop windows to get through and after the first pit stop they come thick and fast every half an hour or so and they play a huge role in the success of the drivers in this type of endurance racing we're coming towards the close of the third stint. Back behind the wheel of the Uvio car is Farchini. JPR Uvio lead the race. They started 18th. Uh, down to second place are two rent dominoes. Chris Hart in his second stint now. That car started 16th on the grid. So the top two in the championship are the top two in the race. Team Viking, who clawed their way up to fourth place from the back of the grid, have got an issue with the car, though, I'm afraid, which is going to cost them severe time going the right way though and recovering from their earlier spin are Team Kennedy after an excellent second stint from Charlie Kennedy. I just did what I could, made up the time, got my head down, caught me and Paul Rivette were close together, just we caught, caught up the pack in front, overtook them and did all we could really. 
we've been having a lot of bad luck recently, so fingers crossed we can try and um, turn that bad luck into good luck and um, have a good finish this weekend. So UVO lead from two rent dominoes, Axiometrics a third and potentially fourth place could be going the way of Apollo Motorsport. They've made their pit stop already, so it's Ryan Burke behind the wheel of the car now. Uh, but coming into the pits, one of the teams they're battling over that fourth place with, JPR GT Radial. Ellis Hadley gets out. He completed the third stint. Newcomer to the team, Jonathan Benson, had a very good second stint. Martin Gibson now being strapped back into the car will get behind the wheel for his second turn in the race. FNS are involved in this battle for fourth place as well, and Greg Evans looks like he's getting ready to take back over the 212 car from Steve Walton the GT radial car goes back out then it's going to be pretty close to the Apollo Motorsport car uh, battling for 7th place before they came into the pits were Agua Caliente Rob Perry's been hauled out of the car as the fueling rig is put on and they've been battling with the former race leaders and pole sitters Team Truman's Jonathan Hode he's been put into the car and it looks like the Truman's car is going to get out first here uh, that could be a critical pit stop yes the Truman's car is released first Matt Hogg's being strapped in. They're ready to go now, but a few seconds behind. So Agua Caliente should still be in around about eighth place. And back on track, the GT radial car got out just ahead of the Apollo machine. So Martin Gibson's fourth effectively with Ryan Burke just behind in fifth place. And we can hear now from Ryan's teammate, Guy Wenham. Talk to us about how your stint was first of all, Guy. Just try and keep it on the track. I mean, there's more than... We normally race four hours, um, and there's more than that left of this race so far. We've already had a few cars and in, come into the garage with problems, so just try and stay out of trouble and, and get to the end. We had a bit of contact in my stint um, from some drivers starting to banzai a little bit. So we got a little bit of bodywork damage, but cars running really, really well. I was about the quickest out there in my stint, and, and Ryan's running really well in this one. We're into the early evening in this eight-hour into darkness race at Anglesey. It's still very blustery, but still a beautiful place to come racing. Now, I'd rather be on the track than on the seas today, that is for sure. Now, there's been a big drama for the championship contenders, two rent dominoes in the garage from second place, and they're going to be in for a while. There's a problem with the clutch and gearbox of the car. And also in the sister car, the FNS car, which was going so well as well, of Steve Walton and Greg Evans. So real frustrations down there. They're going to get to try and get the car back out as quickly as possible. But with a short lap here, you lose laps very quickly indeed. So it's all falling into the hands of JPR Uvio, Fabio Randaccio back behind the wheel. And they are well clear now, almost half a lap clear of the JPR Axiometrics car 267, uh, which is just about to lap the Fun Bikes car, which is running back in the top seven now. Uh, JPR GT Radial have fought their way back up to third place with Apollo Motorsport in fourth place still glued to their tails. Those two cars switched around during the pit stop window and have been running together ever since. So fantastic battle going on between them. They're not that far behind Axiometrics. Good news for FNS, they're going to be released back on track, but a lot of laps down. So the title hopes of two rent dominoes take a knock. FNS will have to wait at least another round for that elusive first podium. And DispatchBay.com, who had been running up in the top three, are also in with problems. To find out more, James has caught up with team leader Andy Bicknell. Electrical issues um, along the lines of an alternator cable snapped and shorted out on the chassis or somewhere, uh, which has caused sort of haywire and the lack of power in the battery altogether. So we lost shift. So we couldn't downshift because um, we didn't obviously know that the battery was using all its juice to, to do the shifting for us. So, uh, yeah, not good. So the demise of DispatchBay.com means that the 170 car of Team Truman's is now back up to fifth place. Colin King's North on board at the moment. Right behind him on the track, the Team Kennedy and Team Viking cars, but they are eight and ten laps down respectively after their earlier problems. As you can see, though, both cars absolutely flying. At the tail end of that trio is Mark Home. Bit of a sideways movement there for the 104 Team Kennedy car. And there's the Greensall Motorsport car back into the top six now. Ryan and Paul Lewis, the brothers, and team leader Nigel Greensall having a great day so far here at Anglesey. We've had over 120 laps of racing, but we're not yet at the halfway mark. It's early evening here at the Welsh Coastal Circuit and we're four and a half hours into this eight hour race. JPR Uvio uh, lead the way. Two rent dominoes uh, were in contention early on in the race, the championship leaders, but they had a problem with the clutch and the gearbox and they're now back out, but they are almost at the back of the field and just trying to pick up a few points if there are some retirements. So Chris Hart back behind the wheel of the car. You saw Henry Dawes waiting to take over uh, because the next round of pit stops is imminent. There is the JPR Axiometrics car, which 
which is on the lead lap in second place. JPR GT Radial just behind in third. And then Apollo Motorsport are in fourth place. They're the only four cars on the lead lap now. Uh, there's Christian Rose getting ready to get back behind the wheel of the Axiometrics machine. They're going very well in this race. And that's Fabio Randaccio, who is waiting to take over the leading car from his teammate Farchini. The pair looking to become the first team to win two races this season. And there's a change for second place. That's Martin Gibson for the JPR GT radial squad. The 97 car getting into second place ahead of Axiometrics, just ahead of them on the road, but eight laps down now. RPLR racing. Uh, the car was stuck in gear. That was their earlier problem. They could still get a top 10 finish out of this. Agua Caliente are only one lap down and they are currently running in fifth place. And on course for their best results so far in the campaign are Raw Motorsports. Alex McLeod, who's a relative newcomer to racing and his much more experienced teammate there, Paul Rivette. And the 251 Team 7 car comes in for its mandatory pit stop. Drivers Ed Worthington, John Illy and Rod Barrett currently running just inside the top 10. Once the driver steps out, the refuelling churn is put onto the car. Next driver not allowed in until the refuelling is complete. That happens now. Next driver steps in. Team 7 have the 263 car as well on track of John Saunders and Jonathan Seymour. That's going to be coming in for a driver change pretty shortly too. This is the second place JPR GT radial car, stuck at the moment behind the PLR racing car, which is eight laps down, and the Axiometrics car third on its tail. Uh, so we can hear now from Ellis Hadley, who's down in the pit lane with James Anadarkis. How are you feeling about the race? Yeah, a little bit apprehensive, it's all, it always is. We're not, we've been sort of up the pointy end all this season so far, and we've always had mechanicals, which have sort of let us down in the beginning, uh, beginning of the season, but yeah, we're, we're trying not just to think on it too much and just, just plod along, let the minutes tick by and hours and uh, see what happens at the end of it. It's a bit too early to get excited with the fact that you're running at the top end. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. The last hour, that's, that's when it's all going to happen. So it's going to be a bit of do or die and see what happens. And still, I think the weather forecast is still going to be clear, but we're in British summertime, we're in Anglesey, anything can happen. It's definitely looking like a race-winning package from GT Radial now. Whether that victory will come today, not sure, because UVO have got a three-quarters of a lap lead. However, uh, things can change very quickly in Fun Cup, so you never know. Still a long way to go. There's another driver change and another pit stop for another of the Team 7 cars. That's the 249 machine this time of father and son Alan and Sam Brown, who are joined by team boss Jay Shepard this weekend. Jay, a former race winner in the Fun Cup. There's Chris Wesley. One of his many jobs on the Funk Up weekend is to make sure that drivers don't exceed the pit lane speed limit when they come in and out to make their driver changes. Two rent dominoes uh, uh, having another change then. So Chris Hart gets out, Henry Dawes gets in. The car is running well now after its earlier problems. Very quick, but of course they have lost an awful lot of time, about 40 minutes they lost uh, with the gearbox and clutch change. Now this is interesting, tyre changes. You don't see this very often in the Fun Cup, but it is after all an eight hour race. So the treaded GT tyres being changed on the Truman's car and also on the Agua Caliente car. I have to say, they're doing a very rapid job, well organised and well versed in changing those tyres. As we take a look at John King on track in the Team 7 Fun Bikes car, that's running well in seventh place now. It's keeping pace with the Apollo car, which is a lap ahead in fourth position. Uh, it's not been a very good day, though, for two rent dominoes. They don't have many bad days, but this is all falling the way of their key championship rivals, JPR Uvio, who lead the way. Henry Dawes back on track, which means we can now hear from his teammate, Chris Hart. It's not been the best of days. We've had the centre of the clutches span. Um, so we lost quite a lot of time with that, but I mean the car's back on the pace. Shame really, because I think we've got the pace for it. I mean, your car is back out there. Is this just about enjoying yourself now then? Uh, no, not really. I mean, look, anything can happen in the next two rounds as well. So I mean, our worst drop round before was an eighth. Uh, some of the front runners have had drop rounds, so who knows what happens here. Still a long way to go and, and the other races as well. I think it's been a tough day for a lot of people today, hasn't it? How are you finding the eight-hour eight hour stint? Yeah, I mean, my eight hours is fine. We've done it before, but it's just the winds up today. The cars are not handling like they normally do. Not much grip from the wet yesterday. Uh, it's getting, the track's getting better, but I think everybody's struggling, to be honest with you. But uh, like I said, just keep going. You never know in this race what happens. Sun about to set here at Angle C. About to go into the night shift. Nothing for it then, but to have a fish and chip supper for the hard-working teams. It's been pretty relentless for them, particularly with the advent of some of the teams having to change tyres. To find out more about that, James Anadarkis has caught up with Agua Caliente. Jamie, we've just witnessed 
in my experience, one of the first tyre changes uh, in Fun Cup. That's not usual, really, is it? Talk to us about what the decision behind that was. Uh, no, you're right, it's pretty unusual. Normally, only punctures we do it for. Um, we're struggling a bit with tyre wear because the abrasive surface, I think because of the sand that we have locally to the circuit. One minute 20, roughly, I think we timed it as. How happy are you with that? Sounds pretty impressive, yeah, pretty pleased. Went, felt, felt like it went really well, so yeah, happy. Is it quite difficult, quite intense when you are doing tyre changes like that? Because it's not something that you probably regularly practice, is it? We do practice it, actually, for the puncture risk. Um, it's just trying not to fumble, be methodical, going slowly, actually, I find helps better, helps it go better, so yes. Are you getting OK in this race? Everything sort of happy? Your team are happy? Yeah, we're having a really good race. It's going really well so far. Hopefully we can get the car home in the top ten. Well, a huge disappointment for Greensill Motorsport. They were running in sixth place, going really well, but they've had a problem with the car and with just a couple of hours to go. It's cost them 17 laps and they're now down, I'm afraid, to 12th place. <laughs> So the circuit will be shrouded in darkness for the final two hours of action here at Angle C. A real test for the drivers now to keep the concentration up. They've still got those gusting winds blowing around the Anglesey Coastal Circuit as well. A really frustrating day for Team Viking. They got from the back up to fourth. They had a problem. They got back up just in around the top ten and they're back in the garage losing more laps, I'm afraid, the Zandvoort race winners. But it has been a trouble-free day so far for JPR Uvia. There, the 225 car leads the way. And the only other car that's now on the lead lap is the second-place machine of JPR GT Radial, the number 97 car. The gap is only 15 seconds now after a recent safety car, but JPR Uvia have begun to pull back away. They're in third place and up onto the podium now, Apollo Motorsport. And the reason they're up to third place is that there has been a late race drama for Axiometrics. Christian, you were top three. Uh, you've obviously dropped down a fair bit now. Problem with the drive shaft, I believe. Yeah, obviously, absolutely gutted. Uh, and yeah, drive shaft just went. So I parked up at the end of the pit lane, just on the grass in a bit of a safe space. And uh, yeah, just waited for the recovery vehicle for three laps, I guess. But uh, third place down to 15th, whatever it is now. A bit gutting, but you know, we can still get points. So just need to get the motivation going again. <laughs> Well, at this stage of the race, it's about keeping your concentration and surviving. And that's exactly what the 170 Truman's car is doing. Although it goes a bit wide there on the way at appeal and down through the court screw. Still survives though and runs in fourth place, uh, running in fifth position. Uh, a lap behind them is the 171 Agua Caliente car. There it is, the uh, green machine of Rob Perry and Matt Hogg have an excellent season so far. Uh, sixth place is the Team 7 Fun Bikes car of Ed and Chris Bridle and John King. Excellent start to the race, went down the order a little bit, but they're back in the mix. And there's Neil Plimmer, and he and his teammates Jeff Forsett and Ben Pitch had a good start to the race, then dropped down the order. But they've kept going, they've kept chipping away, and PLR now back up into seventh place. Well, there are quite a few teams with hard luck stories today, I imagine. Not least Team Viking and catching up with James Zanadark. He's down in the pits now. Is Mark home. It's been a hard day for you guys. What a, what a tough one. We started last, we got up to fourth after two stints. Then we had a bolt go in the gearbox. Then we were back down to 21st, 10 laps down, back up to P11. Fantastic time out there, really great racing. And then the throttle cable's gone with uh, 50 minutes to go, dropped us back down to 13th. But, you know, not all is lost, we can still win. <laughs> and uh, we're going to give it large and see if we can salvage a few points. Well, importantly, Team Viking have got the car back out. They're in 13th place, so they'll still get some points. It's not a total disaster. Uh, going well in 14th place, the team that was dead last at the end of the first lap, uh, seven odd hours ago, it's Team 7, John Saunders and Jonathan Seymour. So they've kept plugging away, going well. JPR Alpha Racing in their first night race. Jonathan Curry, Morgan Tilbrook and Henry Green are just a few places behind them in 16th. And even though we're into the final hour of the race, tyre change is still going on for Team Kennedy. We're back into the top 10 now. And for two rent dominoes as well. Uh, and for JPR GT Radial. So this will cost them over a minute, but they're over a lap clear of the third place car of Apollo Motorsport there. Uh, so they should be able to hold on to their second place. So Apollo on for their second podium on the bounce. And we can hear now from Ryan Burke. Obviously, it's been a long birthday for you uh, out on track talks perhaps about changing tyres, whether or not the tread depth and all this kind of thing is, is within the limits. What's happening? At the moment we're just seeing what happens to the very last stint. 
And if we need to swap them, we'll swap them. But I reckon we'll be all right. A bit cold if you get sprayed with champagne tonight, though, but... It's your birthday, though, mate. A bit of champagne on your birthday. Uh, that'll be all right, won't it? Actually, I think it's Prosecco, and it stings when it gets in the eyes, so I think I'll try and dodge that. <laughs> it's been a very long day here at Anglesey, but the chequered flag is imminent. And what a job by the team at JPR Uvia. That car has run absolutely flawlessly. And Farchini, who's there on the pit wall, and Fabio Randaccio are about to become the first team this season to win more than one race. Perfect timing in the hunt for the championship. There's Martin Gibson, who drives the JPR GT radial car. Jonathan Benson and Ellis Hadley. Well, they're going to be the only other car on the lead lap, and it looks like it's going to be another podium finish for them. Second place is imminent, but there is the flag. And JPR Uvia win the race. And with that, they move into the championship lead after the toughest race of the season. So after 332 laps of racing, JPR UVO take the victory from JPR GT Radial with Apollo Motorsport joining them on the podium. Championship hopefuls Truman's fourth, Agua Caliente an excellent fifth from Team 7 Fun Bikes in sixth, PLR seventh, World Motorsports with their best result of the season so far in eighth place. Your second victory of the season. Uh, talk to us about how it was out there. Really, really good result. Smooth. Great job by the team. Really good. Scott, Yoda, the boys. Amazing. Really, really slick on the strategy, everything else. And we managed to pedal it OK. Did it feel like a long day, being eight hours, obviously, on the track? You must be knackered now. If you're winning, you're not, you're not so tired. But, it, yeah, it's a long day. Two doing eight hours is, is a bit of hard work, but... That's fine. You must be feeling like you really are in there and up and amongst it with the championship battle. We, we hope so. Um, we just two more to go now. So we've got to do well in those as well. No, it's perfect. It was it delivered. We had fun and we won a cup. So what more can you ask? So JPR Uvio moved to the top of the standings on drop scores. They're 24 points clear of two rent dominoes with Truman's in third. Two races to go and still 144 points up for grabs. So many congratulations to JPR Uvio. They are victorious for the second time this season and in doing so put themselves firmly in contention for the championship title. We're off to Silverstone next for the penultimate round of the Fun Cup Championship. We'll see you there.